Morning boys and girls, it's Dale here. Today we're going to do a quick tear down of an electrical installation certificate that we received a copy of yesterday. Um, my first concerns with this certificate was it immediately looks like a 17th edition EICR. Um, certainly if you look at the middle of page one where we've got wording to the effect of the installation and testing detailed in this report and accompanying schedules have been carried out in accordance with BS 7671 2008, which is the 17th edition, as amended to 2015, which was Amendment 3. Um, at this point here, I stopped. Let's have a quick look at this company who's carried out the work um, and find out that they're not actually registered to carry out electrical installation condition reports using the NAPIT branding. So then looked at the certificate under a little bit more scrutiny, and there appears to be several mistakes that uh, cast doubt on the validity of the certificate. Let's take a look. For obvious reasons I've omitted the details of the client and the installation address and given the installation is approximately 25 years old that would set the property being around 1997 assuming it's a new property. There appears to be no other evidence of alterations or any inspection records available. And the purpose of the report was for a safety assessment requested by the client. The real reason it's a landlord and requires the certificate to be completed and up to date for the purposes of rental. Uh, that would probably be a better reason to put into that box um, for continued safe service for rental purposes or two words of that effect. The extent the installation covers the electrical installation and they have agreed that there are no floorboards to be lifted or inspection of a loft space, which is a little bit, uh, I certainly frown upon it anyway. Um, there's no reason why you can't look in the loft space unless it's completely inaccessible. We tend to find sockets coming off lighting circuits and all sorts of an array of uh, junction boxes with no lids on and all sort of cobbled together. So it's always worthwhile just popping your head up into the loft to have a, have a quick look. So this is any sort of real limitations, i.e. there's no loft space or physically without destroying the house, you're not going to get in there. There's no reason why we can't have a quick look. And this EIC I was carried out, believe it or not, nearly a year ago, dated the 3rd of March, 2021. The outcome of the installation, the deemed as satisfactory and looking at page two we've got some observations uh, which are semi unit is made of combustible material C3 seems reasonable based on the installation date the cooker isolator in close proximity to the hob that's not a code under BS7671 um, used to be part of building regulations as a general rule of thumb adopted by the industry. Um, so it, you could have listed it as an observation, certainly no code required. So item number three is no RCE protection for circuits one to six. It's presumably a split load board, uh, with the latter circuits being RCE protected. So C3, that seems reasonable. Uh, high CPC reading on the socket ring main. Oh, very poor terminology. Ring final circuit would have been better words. Further investigation, that's presumably end-to-end -end high resistance readings. Uh, main earth bonding, main protective bonding conductors perhaps. Uh, not visible due to boxing in. I think they're referring to the BS951 clamp but not being accessible. The water stop tap, I would have th thought that they would have done an R2 wonder lead test to confirm the bonding and not found the clamp. If the property is 25 year old it might be that it's plastic services anyway so interesting. Move on to uh, page three. Recommendations. Now this is a really important box where we get to expand on um, what we've learned from the installation, what we think about it. We can't put average condition we can't put good condition, excellent, because that doesn't tell people what condition the electrical installation is. If I put excellent condition and somebody else comes along, their expectations of excellent will be different to mine. And average is again, average condition, who knows what that means. So you need to be putting a bit more than average condition. Um, put that it's a split load board, RCE protection, afforded for circuits, whatever. These uh, 
bonding is not satisfactory or whatever you think good insulation resistance readings you need to be putting a bit more bump into here to give almost a lay person um, as to how it how it is average condition means nothing to me uh, the next inspection they put five years uh, or change of tenant stroke owner well it's asking for an interval in terms of years months or weeks and not when you change the wind speed or change your car color or anything like that so it's just should have put five years into there looking at the uh, supply characteristics and earthing tns very unlikely on a 25 year old installation but it could have been rewired 25 years ago so we'll have to take its uh, word for it if it's a 25 year old house then it's probably tncs um, that's a lead sheath or a separate conductor supplying uh, an earthen conductor to the property uh, single phase polarity was okay nominal voltages uh, u voltage is line to work sorry line to line so that should have been 400 presumably um, if there was a three phase supply in use so it's only a single phase because we've ticked single phase so that should have just left the, uh, a line through it or not applicable and euro is line to earth 230 volts 50 hertz and 0.29 ze that sounds reasonable and prospective current fault current is 830k sorry 830 amps so if i do 0.29 times 830 we've got a voltage at the property of 240 which sounds about correct so that's good limitations applied for these protective devices that's the suppliers cut out there may have not have been any um, writing on the fuse which is sometimes the case on older properties uh, distributors facility that looks good uh, method of electric shock um, against electric shock sorry is ads automatic disconnection of the supply maximum demand 80 amps never going to be 80 amps there because we've got a current rating of 80 amps on that so they've taken the figure from the main switch and put it into this thing here you should be clamping these um, if you if practical or calculate look at your circuits don't add them all up because that's not a true maximum demand you're never going to use everything uh, and take a percentage of what you think's real so this this figure would have may have been in the 50s i would have thought looking at the circuit identifications that will come to shortly main switch uh, 60439 it's an 80 amp it's not fused at 80 amp or no device rating or setting so there's a line through there or not applicable device rating 240 volts which would be true no rcd main switch bonding conductors and uh, earthing conductor they look okay bonding to gas and water it's been able to prove that they are uh, bonded that's good at the schedule of inspections uh, i'm not going to go through all these but we'll just take a look at some things that we think may be right or may be wrong um let's have a look first thing down on the list so we've got five one sorry not five one i've gone i've gone ahead of page say say that again i've gone ahead of myself all of a sudden um 3.8 uh, accessibility and condition of other protective bonding conductors he's put a tick in there um, I don't think there is any other bonding conductors. He certainly ticked um, gas and water, so just not applicable would have been all right in there, I suppose. Not a massive uh, woo there. 4.4 condition of the enclosures, including fire rating C3. That looks reasonable because it's a combustible consumer unit. Uh, 4.11 presence of non mixed color labels. So he's put a tick in there saying that there is a mixed color label however on page one he was saying that there was no alterations or no evidence of alterations just food for thought really as much as anything if, if there's alterations there then you could say that it's from january the first 2005 perhaps i don't know maybe you sort of complied with amendment two of uh, bs 7671 2000 and 2001 was it? it was 1991 i think my amendment two is when we changed the colors and wires um looking at the last one 418 rcd protection for 
fault protection. Uh, let's put a tick in there. We've got circuits one to six without any fault protection. Oh, we've got fault protection by uh, means of a circuit breaker, but uh, I don't know why it's ticked that, to be honest, but let's look at the next page. Um, next page, 419. Looking through on that, that looks pretty good, to be honest. Limitations. I'd probably just take these cables um, installed in prescribed zones and ex see extent and limitations. Well, they're not expecting you to see through the walls, only what you can see. So tick them. And again, cables concealed on the floors, drop a tick in that box. You know, where you've been able to see stuff above ceilings, i.e. in the loft. There was no limitation really, was there? Was there no loft thatch there? I don't know. We'll have to go to site and have a look at some stage. Next page, uh, third page. That looks pretty good, I think. Uh, ah, look at this. Locations containing a bath or a shower. Additional protection by RCDs. Put a tick in there. So we have got RCD protection for the bathroom, is what he's saying, but I would think circuits one to six would include the bathroom. Uh, protected measure. Again, so uh, do we have down lights there? Maybe. Do we have down lights in the bathroom with RCD protection? Now, if this is a 25 year old property, likely to have the MR16 type lamps, um, self transformer. So they could have down lights, which means then he would have been ticking some of these things here, but I'm not quite sure. At this point, I'm getting a little confused. RCD, no RCD, down lights perhaps, no down lights, I'm not sure. And then even more shocking, we've got a BS1363 socket outlet in the bathroom. Tick. So it's a low voltage, that's 230 volt socket, sighted at least three meters from the zone one. Tick, my bathroom's not big enough and I've got a big bathroom, but um, yeah, interesting, we shall see what happens moving on uh the schedule of the test results um lights downstairs lights up smokes some spare circuits shower cooker socket sockets no mention of an rcd on here but it's got to fall in we've got some kind of figures in this column so it's a split load board probably a wilex board um i might see the main switch on here just because I'd just like to see what it is, what the main switch is, 60439, 947, whatever it might be. You can put your meter tail sizes on the first line and give any other information relevant to that particular installation. It's DB1, it's in the back hallway. Uh, 837 is prospective fault current and from that we can work out the voltage would be 242. Um, let's have a quick look, any significant errors on here. Oh, 30 milliamp RCD protection on this column here for circuits one, two, three, which is a bit odd because he's got no test times for them. Maybe he's just put that in by accident, but he did take that. They were protected by RCD for, I would assume lights upstairs. I'm really confused at this point. Uh, maximum permitted ZS values are incorrect. He's done 80% values in here and it's asking for the maximum ZS permitted by ZF. BS7671. So you need to be picking them pages from oh, about page 61 in the regs book and the 18th edition. That should be obviously 7.29 for them circuits. Um, and these are calculated ZS's. So he's taken this figure here, added on 0 0.29 to get a calculated ZS. Again, this figure to that figure, this figure to that figure. Uh, looking at the shower, um, again, He's put reference methods 101, which includes thermal insulation, but he hasn't been in the loft to confirm. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me. No point serve for a shower, disconnected perhaps? Possibly a disconnected shower circuit there. He's not got any R1, R2 readings for some reason. Again, maximum ZS values are wrong for all these. They should be 95% uh, of 1.15 whatever that calculates to be I'm not going to do it in my head um, again calculated ZS's on the end we've got RCD time so we have got RCD protection I presume by it is 30 milliamp it's put 30 somewhere here hmm interesting 
so yeah that's the that's the uh, test results um yeah finding it a little bit difficult when these people are going out charging 150 quid 170 quid to carry out an eicr when they aren't registered to do that now the customer said can you come and do the whole thing again because we need it to be a valid eicr and not on paperwork that is sort of nearly 10 years old it's uh, a bit poor to be honest um but there we go that's the tear down of this eicr i've not gone into too much detail but i just think there's too many mistakes on there for it to be valid i don't mind the odd one you know we all make the odd little blunder by putting a typo in or putting something in the wrong box maybe it's down to the software he's using uh, this is software generated maybe it's just pre-filled with the zs values on here and stuff like that and just put automatic ticks into boxes i've done know. this is why i prefer to do certification manually anyway guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video